Greetings to everyone. I'd like to share a few ideas about my favorite research topic, how people approach messy problems. These are also called wicked or <clears throat> ill-structured problems. They are also uh, not well understood and their solutions are not very evident. Nevertheless, their outcomes are very consequential and they are becoming increasingly frequent in today's turbulent world. A famous example is the unexpected radio call from Apollo 13 saying, okay, Houston, we've had a problem here, referring to an onboard explosion. Messy marketing problems normally don't attract such national attention. Two that did are the Tylenol product tampering scare and the perceived association among European consumers, <clears throat> excuse me, of uh, drinking Coca-Cola and experiencing a mysterious illness. I have found leaders who are highly successful in approaching messy problems to be more open-minded in a certain way than their less successful counterparts. They make disproportionately greater use of thinking tools that encourage examination of how they think and are willing to initiate necessary adjustments in those processes. A closed mind is reluctant to do this. It conserves resources, seeks shortcuts, and initially addresses messy problems as if they are routine. <clears throat> Excuse me again. There is, however, a Lake Wobegon effect. That is, most people feel they are above average in being open-minded in this way when approaching messy problems. In reality, many, if not most, are not. So what specific tools do open minds engage that encourage reflections about how they think before arriving at particular ideas to think about? I'm going to introduce seven. The first one is having comfort with ignorance. Ignorance or not knowing is often viewed as an enemy. However, it is both a friend and our natural state. It is where potential knowledge lives. And with the right frame of mind, one that asks, what if ignorance can be very productive? Another is error sensing. Exercises uh, focused on error sensing help uncover what are often hidden beliefs. They're hidden from conscious view and are therefore incorrectly assumed to be <laughs> valid reliable or relevant. These beliefs are often why zones of ignorance are much wider than we suspect. Another quality is question sensing. Question sensing can help redefine the boundaries of our knowledge deficiencies. Questions birth answers, much as caterpillars give rise to butterflies. They orient us in a particular direction and thus define what we do and what we do not learn. Yet another uh, pool of thought that gets used is uh, curiosity. Curiosity emerges from a basic need to know. It is evolution's way of shrinking comfort zones. Curiosity's job is to select the most relevant issues we need to explore. However, it is not a limited or 
<clears throat> an unlimited resource. Triage is required when selecting which of many fault lines um, are revealed that merit our attention. Another quality of mind, uh, tool of mind, is comfort with ambiguity. And I want to be clear, it's not tolerance of ambiguity, it's being comfortable with it. Ambiguity lives at the interface of what is and is not known. It arises when desired information is unavailable, incomplete, or its meaning is unclear. It demands imagination, <laughs> one of the most powerful tools minds have evolved in order to supply missing knowledge. The penultimate quality of mind that I'm going to discuss is wisdom. Wisdom, as one interviewee put it, is knowing shoes provide protection, but that not every shoe is healthy for every foot. It involves a delicate balance between confident knowing and constructive doubting. And the final quality that I'll, I'll comment on is what I think of as panoramic cognition. This involves seeking relevant knowledge or other kinds of insight from seemingly unrelated contexts. It emerges from the ability to categorize experiences. This enables metaphor or the comprehension of experience in one category in terms of our experience in other categories. However, it requires being curious about other fields, embracing their ambiguities, and being daring in accommodating novel thoughts. I'm going to conclude now with three observations. First, your favorite qualities of mind may be missing. Please, please supply them. That is an important exercise for everyone. It's important in its own right. Second, consider how your own set of qualities merge together. This will make viscerally clear for you the single messiest problem I've encountered in this project. It is this. Open mind qualities form a nonlinear system. Each quality's handprints are all over every other quality. While it is tempting to treat them in isolation, that is not the holistic way our minds serve them up. Finally, there is a special attitude I call serious playfulness, which I hope to pursue further. It is a willingness to bring constructive, well-intentioned mischief to serious consequential problems. People successful in addressing mess messy problems have this attitude. Others typically do not. So I encourage you to assess how playful your own thinking is and how you deploy it, if at all, during your encounters with messy problems. Thank you for listening.